The year, in fact, began with one such big birthday bash. The Confederation of Indian Industry celebrated its 100th year with a huge gathering of industry captains and world leaders in Calcutta. The presence of the Indian Prime Minister, along with the Singapore Prime Minister, underlined the significance of Indian economic achievements. It's been a program where there has been a lot of mutual learning, a lot of networking, establishing of contacts, exchange of information, both in the, within the domestic uh, players in the industry and with the international players. They have talked about current state of technology, investments, mutual interest in coming to India. And that is why I believe it's been a working mini Davos rather than a bash or any such thing. What gave the CII celebrations a special meaning was also the endorsement of global investment by the state's left front government. The aggressive selling of West Bengal by the Chief Minister, Mr. Jyoti Boshu, and the WBIDC Chairman, Mr. Somnath Chatterjee, served as proof that the need to woo foreign investment was now accepted across the entire political spectrum of the country. We are uh, going to uh, have time-bound uh, appraisal of the schemes. We're inviting people come here, put us to test, let us try to do it. You don't have to go from one place to another. In a, within one month, I'll tell you whether I can do it or cannot do it. We are having at the highest, topmost level appraisal of the proposals that are coming in this office. They are sitting every day and we are monitoring every week what progress is being made. And throughout the year, dignitaries visiting the country made it a point to address the industry forums. But domestic politics also tried to ride roughshod over the forces of liberalization. With the Shiv Sena BJP combine ousting the Congress in Maharashtra's assembly election, the US power major Enron's $2.9 billion Dhabol power project in Maharashtra was in the eye of a storm. With the BJP keen to score a political point and the Shiv Sena Supremo Bal Thakare calling the shots from behind, the state government first scrapped the venture on the pretext of lack of transparency in the deal but then changed track in a sudden vault farce. Then followed a flurry of meetings and negotiations with the Enron top brass, before the state government decided to kickstart the project on terms which were claimed to be more beneficial to the state. We did not bargain uh, these power projects initially very well. And in a the business, there is always hard bargaining to strike a proper deal. On Indian side, I think because it was a new phase and Power was a new subject, uh, we did not bargain well. But now I think uh, Matrasta government uh, has bargained it and it is coming out well from the Indian point of view. But more importantly, the decision to resume the project had saved the Maharashtra government the embarrassment and cost of international arbitration. The Indian courts, however, came to the rescue of another multinational giant whose expansion plans seemed to be getting derailed from the word go by environmental lobbies and local authorities. The global food chain Kentucky Fried Chicken was forced to close both its outlets in Bangalore and Delhi for a brief period owing to a slew of charges which included the excess use of monosodium glutamate, other additives and even lack of hygiene. The country's legal system may be slow, but in the case of KFC, they were quick to rescue the multinational and both the outlets were back to doing roaring business. The controversies generated by Enron and Kentucky Fried Chicken might have been millstones around the neck of a government keen to present post-reform India's most positive and laudable aspects to the outside investor. But waiting to pull the rug from under the centre's feet was an opposition which frequently railed allegations of scandal and favouritism against the government's handling of new policies, trying to open up the areas of infrastructure and stock markets. But the loudest noises were heard inside and outside Parliament when opposition members, especially those of the National Front, demanded resignation of the Union Telecommunications Minister Sukram on charges of favouritism and irregularities to a Shimla-based upstart Himachal Futuristic Company Limited while awarding the licences for the basic telecom services. 
and providing more ammunition to the opposition's arsenal was the Reliance UTI share switch, a controversy which, along with the telecom tangle, snowballed to derail the proceedings of what could be the last parliament session before the general elections next year.